Welcome uh, to my presentation on the state of the nation in mapping. My name is Rick De Boer. I've done software for 20 years. Um, I've done C++, Java, Ruby and Rails. Until five years ago, I got to know Drupal. I haven't looked back since. I now only do Drupal. Why? Because in my professional career, I've never had more fun and I've never seen better results than when using Drupal. We see that all the time at the Flink Collective. We uh, do s small sites, big sites, commercial sites, non-commercial sites, government sites. And every time we're delighted um, about how well Drupal performs in such a wide variety of applications. If there's any doubt in your mind, or in your boss's mind, or in your boss's boss's mind about plunging into Drupal, then I suggest you watch the video of Chong Vu's presentation yesterday. We showed how a big corporation, Suncorp, went from zero to 30 Drupal sites in just a few years and with no regrets. So why this topic? Well, simply, I love maps. I think maps are beautiful and maps are also very effective. Above all, they're very easy to make in Drupal. <coughs> but most importantly, they're really attractive to use for, for your visitors. Maps will help your business. I started my mapping um, journey six months ago. Um, and I uh, started digging into Drupal, what was, uh, what was out there. I embraced modules. I discarded modules. I patched modules. And I wrote modules from scratch. And so did the rest of the community. As a result, it is now easier to make beautiful maps <coughs> than, it has, than it has ever been. I'd like to share what I learned in six months with you in 60 minutes. I've got three takeaway points. These points are my KPIs. My sponsor, which is me, will not buy me a return ticket to Melbourne if you don't remember these three things. So here we go. Number one, think maps, not tables. Every time you see a map, I want you to think, sorry, every time you see a table, I want you to think, I can turn this into a snazzy map. Number two, leaflet. We don't know what leaflet is yet, but just remember, leaflet. And number three, you can do this. You can make beautiful maps that look a million dollars, in Drupal using only six modules and no coding. <coughs> Quick outline of our presentation. First, I'm going to talk a little bit more about why I think maps are useful, not just in Drupal, but in general. And secondly, a bit of a field trip. I'm going to show you a few maps um, from around the world. And um, I want you to see how you feel about those. Are they good? Are they bad? And then I want to fast track you through the jungle of Drupal map modules to present you with a set of six modules that will work 90% of the time for 90% of your customers, now and in the future. And finally, I want to put my money where my mouth is, if the internet works, and uh, show you those six modules live in action here on stage. So why would you want to use maps? Because maps engage. Maps draw you in like no amount of numbers can. <clears throat> and engaged visitors care. And they need to care before they do something on your site. Dries uh, said it in his keynote um, that in order to run a business on the internet, you need to first attract, then engage, influence, convert, and retain. Well, maps are a very strong way, I feel, to engage people. But it's not just pretty pictures. Maps also help to analyze data. They alert us to outliers. They reveal correlations. Um, and I'm going to talk uh, about that a bit more in my demonstration, that second aspect of, of maps, the analytical power of them. But whether it's um, a pretty map or 
a very analytical map. In both cases, maps sent the visitor on a journey leading to actions. And at the end of the day, that's what you want. You don't want your customers to just look at your uh, website. You want them to do things, like pick up the phone and buy your product or your service. Does anybody care about this? <laughs> don't think so. But you've got to use maps well, because maps are strong visual elements. So they play a role in the image that you create and the perception that you create for your website and therefore for your business. So that may work out well, or it may work out not so well. So I want to take you on a little field trip. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention about the, the image. If I see a Google map, I know 2006, then I think, well, these guys are probably a little bit lazy or a bit boring or just plain corporate. But if I see a really creative modern map, then I think, wow, these guys are with the zeitgeist. These guys are cool. So here's the little field trip. Um, you can look at these maps any way you like, but uh, in order to judge them, uh, use either your own criteria or, or these, um, if you're not quite sure. Um, so think for yourself, is this map functional? Does it visually engage? Does it tell a story? Fingers crossed that this all works technically. So hopefully, if I click on this, yay! Anyone remember the Great Fire of 1666 in London? Well, there it is on a real map. This is actually a real map. So you can, you can sc scroll it and you can zoom in. And this is uh, done by the wonderful guys of uh, Stamen. It's um, so high tech that it doesn't work on any browser but Chrome. Um, and actually, uh, there is so much computation going on. I don't know whether you can see it at the, at the end. But try this at home by all means. If you look close on the screen, then you see all these pixels changing from chimney rare to pumpkin orange, orange and banana. And it's just fascinating to look at. Um, <clears throat> and after a while, your machine actually heats up. The fan, the fan kicks in because that's how much computation goes on here. So hot or cold? Hot, one arm. That was cold? Don't like it? Who thinks it's hot? Yeah, me too. I think it's red hot. Um, it definitely visually engages. Functionally, well, you can't really use that to go from A to B and navigate you on the road, obviously. But does it tell a story? Well, in a way, it does. Because when I see this, I think, whoa, if I ever need visualization, I'm going to call these guys because they clearly have the technology. So. Um, yeah, interesting example of a, of a map. Okay, this one. Maybe that one I can get live on screen as well. Yay! Okay, this, um, this is part of a, of a website, actually. Um, and this part is a map of uh, print shops and uh, design studios uh, all over the world. Um, what the guy has done, um, he's used like a printing font to match the, the topic, which is kind of cool. And then also the canvas of the map is a, is a toner, toner style font. But it's not as simple as it may seem because you see all these balloons, balloon here, balloons here. I click on one, it zooms in to the next level and all the underlying markers um, explode out until when I'm here, in, in this case in Chicago at the lowest level, we see the individual print shops. We can click, click on these and we get a link to the website. So it's a very uh, natural and beautiful way, animated way, to use maps to navigate the site, basically, because I'm using the map rather than drop downs uh, to get to a particular site.
Who thinks this is a fail? No one. Cool. Yeah, fair enough. Who thinks it's a pass? Majority. I think it's a pass as well. How about this one? This one I can't see live because the show live because the site isn't live yet. Uh, this is done um, by um, someone who contacted me and said, Rick, 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 I'm using your modules. I made a beautiful map of places where you can buy a good drink in Belgium. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, he did the right thing. He started off with the first two of my recommended modules. And then I said, oh, you really have to use the other ones as well because you can get that beautiful market clustering and you can navigate your way through Belgium. You can actually see that Belgium is there. Uh, so, unfortunately, um, this, was the, this was the slide where, uh, where he was going to redeem himself, but um, he never got back to me. So, sorry, young Frederick. Okay. What about this one? See if I can get this, this one live on. Okay, this is actually Foursquare. Um, and this is what you get when uh, you're in Kuji and you type in uh, cold beer. And so, yeah, okay, it's a very attractive map. It's, uh, it's a map box map. Foursquare ditched uh, Google uh, last year uh, in favor of Leaflet. The, uh, the rendering system, and Mapbox, the tile, tiling system. So, very attractive looking map. Uh, markers, well, they only they, they have just ma uh, numbers in them. Um, what do they mean? Not sure. But the thing that annoys me mo most, Foursquare is all about me, right? It's me surrounded by my friends and the restaurants. And, but where, where is me? I, I, I don't get a marker, right? And on top of that, we had a good laugh at the, the previous um, slide with all those markers on, on top of each other, looking like a scaly fish. Well, this is no better. Oh, but hold on, I can, I can zoom in, right? So zoom in, zoom in. Oh, yeah, I've zoomed in, but now my markers have gone north. Oh, pan, pan, pan. Do you see the difference between this one and the, the, the toner map, how easy the toner one was and how cumbersome this is? Plus, I still don't know where I am. I mean, I'm new to Sydney. Uh, where, where is Kuji on the map? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't rain on my parade. <laughs> okay. So, um... <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> 22 is actually manly, I think, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. Um... You put me off my thread. No? Um, so yeah, uh, what do we think? Hip or square? Who thinks this is really uh, hip? Who think this is pretty ordinary? Yeah, I agree. With all your millions for square, you could have done better. Mm. Okay. This very cute looking um, website is um, about New Zealand fruit stalls. So you can sign up there and you can say, I'm selling fruit there and there, and you can put your marker on the map. Um, it's, it's a really cute uh, site. I mean, I love the, the design of it. Um, also an attractive map. Again, leaflet and map box. So the same as Foursquare. But what uh, Foursquare failed to do, this husband and wife, um, did brilliantly. Look at the, the markers again, click on it, bang, you zoom in, zoom in some more, okay, I want to know about that fruit stall, I get extra information, um, the black currants is a taxonomy, so I click on the taxonomy, get other black, blackberry things that I might be interested with, again with a beautiful map, so you see how, how easy this all works, um, and how easy it is to navigate this site. Plus, oh, I don't, we didn't get the marker, did we? Let me, maybe we have to zoom out a bit. 
Okay, I don't know, but normally the, the marker com, comes up as well. So you, you see yourself in relation to the fruit stalls around you. So, very well done, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 the H75 uh, geolocation, that's right. Okay, so ripe or rotten? Definitely ripe. Very sweet indeed, I think. Okay, so in summary, what's new in 2013 compared to 2006? Does Maps still mean Google Maps? Well, I think we've seen some really fresh looks, um, and um, none of them were, except one, I think, were, were uh, Google. So we've got a lot more choice. But there's two other aspects that have changed since 2006, and both of them have to do both of them have to do with mobility. The first one is that people use mobile phones now more than ever, and that means that, and they want to know where they are, they want to be the center of the map, and in order to do that, like Sean said, you need new technology which is HTML5. An IP address lookup is not going to cut it um, if you want to look uh, to show where someone is um, on, a, on a mobile. The second aspect of mobility is that um, phones and tablets are not as powerful as a desktop. So ideally, you want to work with a mapping package that is optimized for mobile, that is lightweight um, and uh, doesn't require huge downloads or huge um, CPU power uh, in order to bring the maps to you. So when I uh, started digging around in Drupal land for modules that would help me with my maps, I soon found that there's many to choose from, but there's really strong dependencies as well. So you can't say, okay, I'll pick that one for my coordinate storage, and then I'll pick that one for uh, filtering, and I'll pick that one for, um, to, to show the map. It doesn't work like that because um, one module will only go with one or two other modules. I also found that some really obvious things that I thought every mapping module would have, like calculation of uh, proximity, filtering by distance, that sort of stuff, that they would all have that. No, not so. And of course, like any other set of Drupal modules, they have different levels of maturity, different levels of uh, the size of their issue queue, um, so it's, it is really a jungle out there. Um, there's an attempt made um, on the Drupal um, documentation site, that's this URL, uh, that shows in a tabular form the various modules, what they can do, what they can't do, what, who they interface with, etc. I'm not going through that, um, because if, if, you, if you know of specific needs, then, then focus in on those, and then soon you'll find that a, a number of them will, will drop by the wayside if you want to get deeper into that. Um, I moved this whole um, story about the anatomy of maps um, to the appendix uh, due to lack of time. Uh, but if you uh, are interested after the session to read some more, then I encourage you to, uh, to look at those because it's got some uh, interesting quotes from people I met on my journey as well about what they did, how they started off with, say, open layers and then ended up with leaflet um, for various reasons. Um, it also explains a little bit about the, the four or five parts to every map um, and how those, those map to Drupal modules. For now, I want you to just um, remember two use cases. One is a, pretty much the traditional way, like the maps we've seen so far, whereby the coordinates are entered by the users of the site, either the administrator or people that, uh, from the public or authenticated users that sign up and they put location-related info in. The other use case is the one I'm going to demo, um, which is where the data comes from an external source. This could be a feed or a spreadsheet someone gives you. That, in fact, that's the, what we found. Somebody said, you know how to do maps. You've got a spreadsheet, so show me. Um, and that's where that whole um, uh, um, analysis of the data really comes out and you can really see how 
the maps start to navigate your mind, basically. Um, it's not just looking at the terrain of navigating the site. Um, the maps that we'll show in a minute um, help you think. Think about the data, and that can only be a good thing. So I said there's many moving parts, and you can read about all of that and the pros and cons in the uh, appendix. However, I don't want you to go away thinking this is going to be hard, because it's not. If you just have the right set of modules, then it's easy. And that right set of modules has already been picked for you. OK. So here's the great mix. Talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> there are um, at least four modules for coordinate storage in Drupal. Uh, this one, the latest version, is my favorite um, because it does, well, one thing and does it really well. It also sets you up for the future. If you were talking here about markers only, but if you want to do, say, the boundary, the, the border of a country or a suburb, then you can use polygons, and that's all covered by this module as well. The second one is views. To some of you, this may be bad news because views is a bit of a cockpit bit of a beast, but you, you'll, you will have to tame the beast. That is, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> your site builders and views goes into core version 8, and you wouldn't want to be a site builder if you don't know all of the core modules, right? So if you, uh, if you don't know a whole lot about views yet, then now is maybe a great time to start. And the third module is Leaflet. Leaflet is a Drupal wrapper around the Leaflet JavaScript library. And it's one that is very lightweight. It's been um, uh, written from the ground up to support mobile. In fact, it's only, uh, the download is about 28 Ks. And if you compare that to uh, one of its uh, competitors or alternatives, maybe, let's say open layers, that one is, I think, 900 K. Um, if so, Maps are built up of tiles uh, of about 20K, say, if a map has 10K, so you've got 200K of tiles, then Leaflet has already shown you four maps in the time that Open Layers takes to just load its JavaScript. So that's, that's a big difference. Um, if you use those first three, then, then you sort of get to the level of Foursquare, all right? So you don't get um, a marker showing your own position. You don't get coloring of markers based on a te taxonomy or something else. You don't get centering options. Um, you don't get clustering. So the next module um, brings it up one level above the mediocrity of Foursquare. Um, and then those other two um, are really small modules. Um, that give real bang for your buck, leaflet more maps. I think it's 100 lines of code or whatever, but it gives you 20 more maps just to, from a drop down. You don't have to switch to a different set of modules to get a different map. No, maps are all in drop down and you pick the one you like. Okay, so I like to rip into the demo if everything works. Okay, so a little bit about um, this data set I'm going to show. So this data set was uh, given to us as a spreadsheet and with the idea of turning that into a map or multiple maps and see what we could find out about that data set, what, what, what would reveal itself. Um, the data set is a, a weight loss program that was done um, in the Melbourne area in two towns, Thomastown and Dandenong. Um, and it contains four groups. So there's a, the control group, people that did not um, take any special diet or, or did or do any special exercise. Then a diet only group, an exercise only group, and a diet plus exercise group. And we follow these people on their uh, quest to lose weight through time. The website here is just a standard out of the box Drupal 7.19. Uh, install, um, no tricks, no use, um, no, no caching, um, no styling, no nothing. Okay, and the map is here. Hopefully. 
Cool. Okay, so I thought I'd start with a, just a, um, a satellite uh, view. Um, view. Zoom out a little bit so that you can see. Yes, this is indeed Australia. We've got 41 markers under there. Um, so that's 40, 40 um, people taking part in the program. Number 41 is us there. So that's the, uh, the HTML5 thingy that's located us. And of course, oh, and I also attached here at the bottom, um, just for debugging purposes, um, the data that you see in the map. It's quite useful for debugging purposes. When you go live, you get rid of that because, well, boring. Okay, so I've also put in some um, controls on the right. Um, there's uh, five of them, and these allow us to slice and dice the data in different directions. So the first one is um, for uh, the various groups, control group, diet only, exercise only, and diet plus exercise. And then there's a, a few sliders for weight. So the first one is for start weight, and then the second one is for the weight at each of the weigh-ins. So the weigh-in is also a slider there, and we can progress that through, through, through time. <clears throat> So to give you an idea about the, the slicing and dicing capability, um, I can, for instance, look at all the people that start with a weight over 88 and then come out with a weight under 88. And it instantly zooms in. And we can, we, we can see instantly that in, uh, in Thomastown, there's three people that do that. And in Dandenong, there's six. So and, uh, you can in instantly ask yourself, well, why is that? Why, why do the people in Dandenong have a higher weight to start with, but then they tend to uh, lose it more so than the people in Thomastown? So we're already starting to uh, elicit information from that data set through maps. OK, I'm just going to put that back a little bit. Okay, so and, and the, the clustering, of course, works beautifully. Every time I, I pick it, I go, ooh, I love it. Um, but the, the, the clustering here is perhaps not so great if you want to comp compare those two data, sub data sets. So we've got Thomas Dana and we've got uh, Dandenong, and we want to see them on the map simultaneously. Um, and with clustering, you can only zoom in on one, one town, of course. So we, we kind of want to zoom in on, on both at the same time. So um, I'm going to have to log in as an admin. Go back to my map. OK. So, in order to do that, um, first going to uh, enable another attachment. So, I created a second map, which was bas is basically a copy of the first one, except that this one will filter by Dandenong. So, I'll just enable that one, and then I'm going back to my first map. And at this point, it's probably a good thing to drive into a little bit of detail. So this is a standard views interface, and we know we've had all, we saw all these other modules, um, and all of them have some simple configurations. All of those configurations are channeled into one additional setting in your familiar views interface. This is the, uh, the, f the, the format selector that you probably know. Normally, you would not see the map Google via IP geolocation and the map leaflet in there. That's provided by the modules that I've installed. If I had installed open layers as well, then there would be a third one saying map via open layers. Going to the settings, then the first thing we have to enter is the name of the field that is providing the coordinates. The reason why this is not a simple drop down is for the esoteric cases whereby a module may provide uh, the coordinates in a kind of non-standard way, and then the table will have a non-standard name, and therefore we can't have a simple selector. We have to give the name like that. Um, 
in this next selector, though, we can just show the fields from the view. So what we're showing in there is the, uh, in the view are the ones that we see here in this drop down. So it's things like their, uh, their name, the group they're in, the gender, their address, start weight, end weight, etc. They show up here in this drop down um, for the differentiator. A differentiator is any column or any field in the view that you select that you want, whose values you want to differentiate the marker colors by. Obvious examples are a taxonomy, a content type, but it can be any of the columns in your view. In fact, it can even be an expression. That's what I've done here. I've created an expression in views, normal way, called weight loss, and that's simply the difference between the actual weight at the weigh-in and the start weight. You could have argued that maybe that should have been a percentage rather than just a difference, but then we get into divisions and multiplications, and it sounds way too much like coding, um, and this is a no-coding session. So um, just the difference. So the difference between start weight and end weight, that's the weight loss. All right? And then we can specify ranges. So over 10, we say, is green. If you lose between 5 and 10 kilos, then you get the yellow marker. If you lose between 0 and 5, orange. And if you gain weight, you're in the red zone. Okay. So you can add as ma many of those associations as you like. OK, then here's a few um, centering options. The one that it's currently on is the auto box. And we saw that when I went into the map, it zoomed in exactly to the level to put a frame around all the markers on the map. So that's why we had Coogee all the way up there and Melbourne all the way up there. <clears throat> that uh, form of centering is now not appropriate, so I'm going to pick this one of the five others. Because I don't want, uh, I want two, two separate maps, and I don't want Coogee to be in that, because I want, I want to concentrate on Thomastown. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, where Leaflet More Maps comes in. It does one thing and one thing only, and it's this drop down. Without it, the leaflet model gives you one map. With leaflet more maps, you get 20 more. So we've had the, um, the satellite map. Uh, maybe I'll try the street map. And I want two small maps, so I'm going to turn this into a 275 pics. And I, this is the only configuration you have to do for the marker clustering. It's the radius. Within, a, um, within which a bubble guzzles up all the markers around it. So if you make it really big, then you get a big radius. Um, but now I'm going to leave it open because I don't want it at all. Never thought I would say that. So that was yes. But luckily, this is a small population. Uh, and we have a lot of colors as well. So there's two ways that we um, get around that. OK, I forgot one thing. Of course, live demo effect. Um, I now have to add a filter so that only the people from Thomastown are shown in this top map. So that's the, called the locality. And apply. So I'll type in Thomastown, apply to this. Display, and I think we should be in business now. Save. Would have been nice if views put me back to my map, but it doesn't. And so here we are. Okay, so lots of colors and two different maps, map styles. It's all possible. Uh, at the top, we've got the Thomastown area, and at the bottom, we've got Dandenong. Okay, let's. Uh, the and, and the colors are, as I explained, still a bit confusing at the moment because there's so many markers. So let's use our filters a bit more. The control group. So they start uh, with, with zero um, in the first way in. They haven't lost any weight. In the second way in, they haven't lost any weight. 
and in the third weigh-in, one person lost a couple of kilos. Okay, that's what you expect for a control group. How about the diet only? Go back to the first one. Okay, so after a month or whatever it is, few oranges, so lost some weight. And at the end of the program, a few greens appear, so they've done a bit better. And finally, of course, diet plus exercise group at the same point, lots of greens. So you kind of expect that, um, but you can imagine using data sets where you have no idea what is there hidden for you, and but with a simple uh, number of sliders and, and, and colored maps, you can reveal so much information. Um, was it all smooth sailing, though? Is, is there more we can dis discover? For instance, this lot here, they started off like so. They ended up with lots of green. What happened in the middle? Oops, a few people regressed. Some yellows have turned orange. A couple of green ones went yellow. What happened? Any idea, anyone? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> if you look, if you look at the balloons, then this Clarence Simpson, by the way, all the names are uh, fake, um, to protect the innocent. She had a weigh-in at 25th of January, so that's, that's after Christmas and then the Australian summer holidays. This person, Leone, she had a weigh-in on the 15th of January, so I think you're right. So that's something that we would never have found by just looking at a bunch of numbers, and maps um, have helped us to um, dig up that information. What do you mean, how accessible? From what kind of... Um, don't know, is the answer. <laughs> um, yeah, you, basically you'll have to just the, the leaflet guys, the open layer guys. And, yeah. uh, for, for debug purposes, def definitely. Yeah, it's... It, uh, sorry? Um, yeah, I guess I could do. I, I haven't been on a project with, with maps um, and uh, accessibility requirements, so I can't really comment on it. Um, but for myself, I like a table at the bottom uh, to debug, because if, if a map shows up a blank canvas, you go, what, what's going on? Is the internet down? Uh, what, what, what's happening? And then the table will, will, will tell me whether the data is there or not. Um, Okay, I think I'm going into my closing words. So, as you have seen, I've introduced a few other goodies. Uh, the first one is address field and geocoder. The spreadsheet that we got doesn't have let and long in it. I mean, who's going to type in let and long for, for, for an address, right? In fact, it didn't even have states and country in it because it was done for Victoria and everybody knew it was for Victoria. So the, the ad addresses in there weren't even complete. They were just street names and, and, um, and towns. But using geocoder and address fields, uh, you're able to um, geocode the address into let and long. Uh, sort of happens under the wraps. It happens, for instance, when you create an, a new piece of content that has an address on it, then the moment you save, it will go out to the internet to a server you provide, the default one is Google, I think, and it will give back the Latin long and store, stores it transparently um, on one of the fields, and you don't have to uh, worry about it. it oh, in combination with GeoField. Basic, basically, GeoCoder is the bridge between GeoField and address field. Yep. Oh, well, yeah. Address field requires you to Address field knows about the way addresses are done in the various countries. So when in Australia, it will, it will know that a postcode is four digits and not letters as well. And, um, so, and in different countries, maybe a different way, and it knows that because it uses... Yep, 
The thing I was particularly impressed with was, um, and I, I can't show this, but I alluded to it earlier, if you have a spreadsheet um, to turn it into maps, you first have to turn it into Drupal content, right? Um, and you use an, some sort of importer for that, and the, the go-to module for that is feeds. Um, and when I imported the, the spreadsheet into con Drupal content, without setting anything, Geocoder kicked in, picked every address from the spreadsheet, sent it off to Google, gave me the lat long, and after the import, everything was there. It was, it's, it's brilliant, really, really impressive module. Okay, so then you don't have to rely on the, on the Drupal module. Okay, yeah, cool, thanks. Um, so the second module that I sneaked in is Views Global Filter. It's kind of um, your normal views exposed filters on steroids. Um, with Views Global Filter, the settings that you make remain valid across the entire website. So if you have num a number of views, and they may be tables or maps or whatever, you don't have to make the selection over and over again. So let's say I have a music site, and it's got lots of bands, lots of uh, uh, eras, and, and lots of areas, and I would just want to know about Be Beatles in New York, 1967. So I would change those, make those three selections, and then I look, the rest of the site will be filtered by that until I change it. So then I see my videos for that period of, of the Beatles only. I see the biographies, I see the, the concert listings, I see the top 40 all filtered by that initial selection. Um, but on top of that, Views Global Filter adds another of, uh, a number of interesting uh, widgets um, because it honors the original widget that was specified on the content type. So for instance, you, you love hierarchical select, right, for your taxonomy, I do. Um, if you have that on the content type, then when you make, create a, 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 a normal view, then it's gone because Views does its own widget. But with Views Global Filter, it will honor that, that, that widget. Same with Autocomplete Deluxe, and also the same with Slide with Style. That's the one um, that was used to, to do those, those sliders. Um, one little problem with Slide with Style, um, it uses a range, right? We set for a float or an integer. You don't want to be um, filtering for one particular value. You don't want to filter all the people that are exactly, exactly 70.5 kilos. That doesn't make sense. You want to have a range. Slight problem, views doesn't accept ranges, not as contextual filters. That's how views global filter works. It, it takes advantage of the views um, contextual filters. So that's where that last module uh, comes in. It makes views understand ranges. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that sort of completes the picture. Okay, a few things we haven't shown. Um, we only showed markers. You can do some really cool stuff with polygons. Um, and with the marker algorithm, it uh, works great, uh, and, and uh, all the clustering in that, uh, up to about 5,000 markers. Then things start to fall apart a little bit, um, and of course, people have already come up with new solutions and they tend to uh, involve doing all of the clustering on the server and then send the result back to the browser because all this stuff is happening in the browser <coughs> and using, using JavaScript. So I've put some um, references in the further reading slide, which you can see here. Also some really cool markers, the Nicholas Mollet or Nicholas Mollet um, website has some really nice markers and you can customize them as well. Change colors and, and so forth. So thank you to all these people who came kind of on, on my journey with me. Some of the sites you've seen are by the people mentioned here. Um, and of course Drupal um, uh, and Drupal.com open source in general is such a great way to uh, do software because you get so many people, you get to know so many people and work with so many people without even seeing the face like I don't know any of those people except one and she 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 is not a Drupal person so yeah that's that I find it always interesting but most of all I'd like to to thank you for coming and um,
and staying till the end. Um, I have um, one more thing to ask you. Actually, three. Remember those three points? What was the first one? That's right. Maps, not tables. You see a table, think maps. What was the second one? Leaflet. Very good. And what was the third one? That's right. You can do it. Now go home and go do it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, 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 oh. okay. <laughs> yeah, leaflet ones do. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did everyone hear the question? Oh, the question was: um, Do the maps uh, work in mobile, and that they uh, support the uh, the pinch and zoom controls? And the uh, leaflet maps do. Um, I, I think the answer is probably in, uh, in the gray area that is between uh, really tight clustering and really loose uh, uh, clustering. Remember I entered the, the cluster radius? I guess if you play with that uh, by making it bigger or smaller, then you may find a setting that suits your particular data set. That's, that's all I can think of. Yeah. And, and coloring. Oh. Coloring the individual markers. One of the, uh, the, the maps that come up uh, when you have leaflet more maps installed uh, are a number of open street maps. Uh, uh, in fact, one of them is, uh, is open pista thing, which puts, takes the base layer and then puts terrain on it and then puts the, uh, the ski slopes, a map of ski slopes over the top of it. So, uh, yeah, that's quite a, an interesting one. Uh, now the, clus the clustering um, in provided by this module, the leaf, is purely by the radius, by the number of pixels. So um, it will gobble up, for instance, the visitor marker as well, even though that is a different type of marker compared to the data markers. Cluster detection. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, the, the JavaScript the, the, and the math behind it is, is, is quite impressive. I had a look, but I had to close it down because it was <laughs> doing, my, doing my head in. So it's really impressive um, what's happening. Uh, not at the moment, no. There are a number of uh, parameters already in this particular clustering module at the JavaScript level, but there's no UI except for the radius at this stage. Are you a coder? No. Shame. Find a coder and let it, have him contribute it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there's a geofield, latest version, has a filter, a number of filters for um, views. And everything's based on view. So if you filter, you can filter in the view um, by proximity. You can you can uh, give a, a central point and then say, give me all the points that are within a radius of 10, 100, 1,000 kilometers of this point. Oh, uh, I don't know of an off-the-shelf solution for that. You had a question already. Someone else? <laughs> Right. 
and that, that satisfied the, uh, the government requirements? Okay. Yeah, two, two good solutions. Thanks for sharing. Uh, what do you mean by directions? Oh, and it will, uh, it will tell you the route. Uh, I haven't come across that as part of the basic options within this set of modules. Yeah, I can. I, 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 I've used that sort of stuff myself, but um, no, it hasn't come up as uh, out of the box, op box options when using these modules. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, OpenLayers has been around for a while, uh, and there's quite a few modules. Um, but when I started with Maps and open layers, I was baffled about how hard it is. I mean, it starts off with, if you want to create one map, you have to create two views. You go, what? You know, for a beginner that, that, to get your brain around that. Um, and Vin Jones, uh, one of the people that, I, that I'm thinking there, um, also went on a similar journey. He had to use open layers initially, at least, because that's what the company you worked for used. Um, and he also said it, it was quite buggy, it was hard to use. Uh, but then in the end, um, he, there was one specific thing about open layers that he liked or that he was required to supply that had to do with a, a layer switcher done in JavaScript or something. Um, and so in the end, he chose, chose open layers. But he himself also says, for my money, start with Leaflet and it will do 90% of your job 90% of the time. Okay, yep. Um, it is, yeah, it is there in the JavaScript, but it hasn't really been brought up the surface in the um, Leaflet Drupal module, yeah. yeah. But Leaflet is, it's pretty new. I mean, it came on the scene in, in, in Drupal, I think, September, October. So there's, t there's a lot of activity, and no doubt someone will provide the facility soon. Yeah, so you're saying it, 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 com it comes about naturally, yeah. purely because all the people flock to the city, and so the population of the state is pretty much the population of the city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, maybe. Um, I haven't researched that. Um, but how, how, how would you imagine that, uh, like a drop-down for a... For a polygon, or yeah, yep. right, right. Import that and say, yeah, I like it. Yeah, that would be a cool feature. Yeah, um, right now I don't know how to, how to do that, but love to work with you on it.
Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, leaflet market cluster does it beautifully. It, um, it com um, when you have uh, 20 uh, markers at the same location, uh, like 20 people living in the same, I don't know, apartment building, whatever, uh, then it shows them as a sort of a, a spiral. And so each of the markers is clickable and, and will have its own properties. Um, yeah, looks good. All right. Thanks very much, everyone.